um, the Hello album went straight into the British charts at number one. Yeah, we had a lot of those. That was great for a while. Um, and it's funny because it's considered, those albums are considered wow, which I don't mind accepting a certain amount of wow, as long as everyone says that it's like most acts, there's some great moments coupled with some shit. If you are prepared to accept that, it's just not real. And there's probably been a handful of albums ever that you could, and again, different people will find them, but there's a handful of albums for anybody that, yep, every single track. Um, with me, the Beatles, other than the White Album, I think, it's just about everything. But, hello, nice album, but it's coupled with some shit, mate, honestly. Honestly, I don't care who it is. So, Alf, Alf, yeah, mate, you know, I just, I, how sort of fast is the roller coaster travelling when you're getting, say, six number ones at albums on the bounce, which you guys had? That kind of thing. Well, at the time, we knew it was quite important, we are quite proud of it, but now you said it like that, oh, I'm a fucking, I shaved my chest a bit this morning, as when it went up again, you see it go. That sounds fabulous. Because if anything happens to anybody like that these days, we certainly all do hear about it. Um, but it was always a work in progress. You were always going somewhere, which is one of the reasons I've got a problem at the moment of being 62. It's because I told you, we sat finished this, we finished building this, and I said to Greg, ah, oh, we'll be all right here for the next 25, for the next few years. And you know, you're 40, you can go 25 years, 50 maybe. 60, 25 years, oh shit. And I think that's beginning to mess with me. What was the question? Well, no, that's good. You got, we got that there. He's going to get this to stop chopping me off when I do that now. I'm going to ask you next. <clears throat> what I am going to ask you is, is this. Around that time, when these number one albums start coming along, would you say that Quo You're a are a drinking, shit. smoking band? Because to me, from we a smoked, point spud view, drink. The, the, the one thing that is weird is a bit strange given every other rock biography I've ever read and every other band I've, I've spoken to is the coke just seems to come along a little bit too late for my liking for what, for how big you guys have got or is that just oh we didn't touch coke until I was well into my 30s and stuff and it was one of those oh, I'm not going there I'm frightened of drugs it was Steve Marriott gave me the first joint and but it was Justin from from uh, Moody's who offered me the first joint I thought, oh no, that's bad, you know. And it was Steve Marriott, and I don't know about any. I remember trying various things when we were younger. That you were always, yeah. They said it works. Nothing happens, you know. So we were somewhere in Germany touring with them, and Steve had scored. So we had a little pull on this joint, me and Ricky, and then looking at each other, and I think, no, no, no. Oh, fuck it, I was going to bed. So we go up to her. We were sharing rooms at the time, both in the single bed line, and. Can you hear voices? No. It's definitely voices or music somewhere, isn't it? No, it fucking isn't. It's working. So we got up and went out. <laughs> and went downstairs. So thanks, Steve. And um, so that was quite, we were quite content, I was quite content with that for a, for a long, long time. And you got, it's a strange thing with uh, with cocaine. It's people say, go on, have a coke, have a two. No, thanks. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, go on, go on. And in fact, someone that worked for us for many years had, uh, was giving it up for a while, or some time, and uh, he said to me, Nick Class, he said, when I was doing coke, put us in, nah, put us in, I ain't got anything. Go on, put us in. I ain't got, you ain't got any coke, no, I ain't got any. As soon as I gave it up, I said, yeah, I'll go on, have some, go on, have some. And it, <laughs> yeah, you know people like that as well, bastards. So, what were we up to? Oh, yeah, the track. So oh, we were lucky in that respect. And again, Rick and I tried it. It was Canada, he measures it someplace else, but my memory is usually better than his. And uh, and again, we had this toot in this room with somebody, and we went out and sat by this pool, and again, we're sort of... Anything? Nah, fucking useless, that is. And then we blanked that for some time, and it was some years later that... I remember being in, in Paris with Pascal Bernardino, Pascal, and... Uh, he said, oh, it's, <laughs> he must have been well into two at the time because he said, it's okay for recreation, you don't do it when you're working. <laughs> we were working. And uh, I think it's kind of, it's, it's odd, you know. I go and talk to these kids at a particular school and discuss cocaine and stuff with them and tell them how great it is. If you want hole in your frigging nose, lose your personality, lose all your friends and spend fucking fortunes on... Did anybody ever sell me any dodgy stuff? No. Try this, it's blinded. No one ever said, well, it's okay. I haven't got the best shit, can you, would you want this? They said, no, this is donkey's fucking knob, every time. Was it? No. And we went to a famous studio in 
Miami's at Criteria, where there'd been a big thing. One of the disappeared. One of the beaches disappeared in the desert with load. <laughs> you know, and you said. And so they couldn't touch anything. No one would get you anything. This house. so. And as soon as we checked into some hotel in Miami, there's this black guy down. You don't just go. What? Speak properly, will you? <laughs> we're English. Hello. Anyway, so we scored some stuff, you know, and we're in the studio waiting to do so. Have a toot and. Oh fuck! Oh shit! Oh. And this guy go pays to buy the best. And like yeah, he go. Oh yeah, that's all right, isn't it? And do you think I nearly took your eyes out and you still went and did it again? Foolish people. Now this is a bit out of sync, but as we're on with the dr drug stories, I've got to ask I you this. Drugs. Um, I'm going to ask Rick, but every time I've read or looked at the other films, you, I always like your answer better. What's the night when you, you, you obviously on some chemical or other, left a recording studio, got away the next morning? Oh, it's, fucking hell. No, that was, I'd just moved here, not this house, the other house where I was a long time, and at that point, I don't know what does it. I thought, well, I don't know. I know why I didn't. I didn't want to employ. Why I figured to employ conventional guards. I wanted people of my age or hippie-like people, if you like. So I employed this guy. And part of me trying to grow too much grass in my greenhouse, dickhead. Um, he said something about he was doing soul for you. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. You know. I said coke, and he said no, 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 no. He said so. So well, no, I'm not snorting it. I was very touchy about my shonka. So he said, we can put it in thingy and drink it. So fine. Lovely. Put it in. I was drinking it. So me and him, I'm there. So off we go. And I turn up at the studio one day. And we'd have it in a sip of tea at the bottom and knock it back. Fine. Oh, there you go. So there's great stories about that as well, if you want them in a minute. And uh, I suddenly, where's that to? I'll drink it. No, that's too much. If I can kill you. No. Get, come with me, so I get him down the bar, I got my fingers down his throat, trying to help me, no, nah, nothing happening, so the day went by, it was the Blue For You album, if you listen to the Blue For You album, we can't play shit that fast anymore, <laughs> I don't care how good your hand is, and uh, so we went home, and Alan Lancaster was living around the corner here then, and, and so we went home together, and we probably finished about 11 or 11.30 and drove home, and Rick was on a stool, Come back in the morning. You were, you were tapping in time there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm into this one. I like this one. And uh, we come back in the morning. And he's still on the fucking stool. Sat there. I said, you're early. He said, I haven't been home yet. Fucking hell. I must have nearly killed him. Give me far too much too. And he'd, he'd started writing mystery songs. So we... And it's against the joy of drugs. We put down the basic backtrack to mystery song. Because when we come to sing it, it's way, way above. Rick's got a high voice, but it's so far. The bats couldn't sing this shit. So they had to completely retry and rewrite a, me a melody after the thing was down on tape with one other melody. It was, And that's why it was always called mystery song. That fucking thing Rick wrote was uh, mystery song. Was you always on the boxes, on the two-inch boxes, you'd always have... Um, a working title or whatever else, and mystery songs, the working title for that song. I don't know what the fuck it was. <laughs>